So we are live, guys. Thank you for joining us. You know, I always like to look down at my phone just to make sure we are live in the group. And, uh, you know, because, you know, Facebook and their algorithms can be a little bit tricky. So I see Jason's handsome face and I see myself. So we are good. Wave at the people, Jason. Uh, so thank you for joining us. And you guys know because of my personal journey and the complexities of being a nonprofit professional, I'm bringing to you um, our annual kickoff Mind, Body and Soul Nonprofit Professional Self-Care Speaker Series. And today I'm very excited to have with us Jason. And Jason is going to be talking about the benefits of giving, believe it or not. It's very hard uh, for people to understand that you're given a gift um, and it helps, it helps with all those physical attributes, fit, uh, blood pressure, all that stuff. But Jason's going to share that with you. That's not my, that's not my, that's not my spiel, right, Jason? That is yours. Um, but first, some of you know that I am Sabrina. I'm the group administrator and the founder of Supporting World's Hope. And, and I've been a nonprofit consultant um, for several years, and I've been in nonprofit industry for over 25 years. And I started this group and this community and this company because we as nonprofit professionals, we're often overworked, we're often overwhelmed and stressed out. You guys who don't know uh, my story, let me share it with you a, a few a, a few, just so that you are prepped and open to listen. You know, my story is um, I ran a very successful organization, took the budget from $750,000 to $2.5 million, did a $12 million capital campaign, established an endowment. Uh, things were rocking and rolling. But what's not rocking and rolling was the self-care for me. So it all came at a cost. Um, and so having that, that cost of being diagnosed with not one cancer, but two cancers, uh, when I was in the hospital room doing my stem cell transplant, I was like, I don't want anybody else to go through this. And so that's why I launched my company, Supporting World Hope. And you guys know that I've been active in this group. Um, you know that a lot of times I give things at low cost or no cost, but this one, this mind, body, and soul is very important to me because we have to learn how to take care of ourselves. And this, uh, over this three series, we've talked about we talked about um, work-life balance. We've talked about mindset, and now Jason is he's the founder of the Five Dollar Difference. Discussing, he's going to be discussing the benefits of giving because I know that. Um, you get a lot of anxiety around asking people for support of your nonprofit. And remember, it goes back to mindset. So Mel talked about mindset. Now, Jason's going to come on in and bring it home for us. Right, Jason? That's what you're going to do. You're going to bring right. it home for us. And you're going to make sure that we understand that although we are asking people to support, that it is a health benefit for those people as well as you in, involved in a nonprofit is also a health benefit to you. We just have to learn how to do um, a work-life harmony, have the right mindset, and have the right mindset when we go in asking for the gifts. So before we get started, so before we get started, I see Lysandra has joined us. Um, I see a couple of people have joined us. Thank y'all. If you want me to call out your name, you just got to make a comment there. But I see people are coming on, and thank y'all so much. Um, but if you could put a heart or a like or a text or whatever to let us know that you can hear us loud and clear, you can even let us know where you're watching from. This is going to help us um, with the algorithms. Even if you're watching in replay, it will still help us with the algorithm. So if you're watching this in replay, put a hashtag replay. That's all going to help. So again, guys, thank y'all as y'all are coming in. So Jason. As you are sharing your screen, now, guys, give me space and grace because we are using StreamYard, and this is this is my third time using StreamYard. <laughs> I think Jason said maybe his first time using StreamYard. So, Jason, <laughs> yeah. we're going to do this transition. So, go ahead, share your screen, and I'm going to remove myself from the screen, and as I remove myself, 
hopefully everything will work out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm not going to share my screen just yet, just because okay. I just want to take a moment to thank, to thank you so much, Sabrina, for this opportunity. Thank you for everyone that's tuning in from wherever you are. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And it's just a, really an honor to be here. Um, if you guys do have questions or comments as I'm giving a presentation or anything like that, you can put them into the, the comment section and then we can answer questions and stuff at the end for sure. Um, so now with that, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Let's make sure so this works. As he's sharing his screen, go ahead and do that. I'm going to read your bio and then I'm going to remove myself because the last time we did this, you couldn't hear me. So I want the people to hear your beautiful bio. So leave your screen there. I will remove, I will do your bio, then remove myself and then we'll share your screen. But guys, give me space <laughs> and grace. First time doing all of this. So, um, so <laughs> Chase. <laughs> Jason is the author of The $5 Difference, How to Change the World with Your Spare Change, and founder of The $5 Difference Nonprofit. He is the father and also a grandfather. He looks too young to be a grandfather, but to two beautiful <laughs> grandbabies, Ember Lee and Riley Grace. I have an Avery Grace. Yay. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and truly a big kid at heart. So... I like his favorite author. You might have to help me with this one. Og Mandino. Is that right? Og Jason? Mandino. Og Mandino. Og. He, Og. Got yep. it. He works as a top performing life insurance consultant for a national company for over 15 years. His passion includes spending time outdoors with his family and his family and friends, whether he's exploring new hot springs or swimming in Lake Tahoe or cooking or photography or, oh, you're training in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, in which he currently holds a purple belt or traveling the world. He shares the $5 difference wherever his journey takes him. When he's not exploring, when he's not busy exploring his passion, he can be found cheering his favorite team, the Seattle Seahawks. Go Hawks, right? Good Go job, on. did a good job. <laughs> So now I'm going to remove myself again, guys, give space and grace. I'm going to remove myself right. and I am going to share the screen with you. So let's do this. Let's see. All right. Sabrina, can you hear me still? Okay. I hope you can hear me. All right. All right. Thank you again for everyone who's joining us online. Um, like I said, this is an honor for me to be here to present and to share with you how giving is good for us and how we can actually hack our health with giving. So today, some of the things I'm going to cover is how we actually can hack our health with giving. And I'm going to prove to you that our money doesn't actually matter. And I'm going to share some feel good stories that will actually help you feel good and also give you some ideas on how you can get motivated to start giving and how you can motivate others to start giving as well. So the title today, giving is good for you how to hack your health with giving. So Sabrina mentioned my little grandbaby. This is one of my grandbabies. This is Emmy. She's almost three. She'll be three in July of this year. And look at that look of joy on her face. Isn't she so excited? She's excited because she just learned how to honk the horn in her mom's car. And she probably did that 20 times when she first learned how to do that. But the look of joy that's on her face is something that each of us has experienced at some point in our lives. And by giving to other people, we can actually elevate our levels of happiness. So let's go ahead and get right into this here. Giving is actually good for you. Now, before we start, I wanna ask a question. Can money buy happiness? Now, this question has been around for ages, probably since money was even invented. And the, the question has always been around, can money buy happiness? And so I would like to say, no, it can't buy happiness, but how we spend it can buy happiness. And there's a book called Happy Money, and it was written by Elizabeth Dunn and Michael Norton. And they're scientists and educators from Harvard University and the University of British Columbia in Canada. And they provide in their book five ways that we can actually spend money and spend our way into a happier state of mind. So the first thing, buy experiences, not things. When we buy an experience, 
we're creating a memory, a lasting memory, and our satisfaction with that actually increases over time versus the material thing like a new phone or a computer. Over time, those things deteriorate even, and then we end up having to replace them. You don't replace experiences. So their suggestion is to buy experiences, not things. Buy that trip instead of buying that new toy. Another way to actually increase your happiness when you're spending is to make it a treat. If we think about candy corn, whether you love it or hate it, candy corn is only around one time a year. Same thing with the peppermint mocha or the pumpkin spice latte. Those are only around for a limited time. Do people like them because they're only around for a limited time? I'm not sure. But if we make things a treat instead of having them all the time, that helps elevate our levels of happiness. The third one is to buy time. And by buying time, what they're suggesting is that we buy, like say, a Roomba instead of mopping and sweeping our floors all the time, vacuuming our floors all the time. We can buy a Roomba. It's an initial investment up front, but it allows us to free up time for our passions and things that are important to us. Maybe it's spending time with our family and friends. Maybe it's exploring some, some new place you've never been to before. Maybe it's reading a good book. But if we buy our time, that frees us up to do other things with our time instead of chores and things like that. Number four, pay now and consume later. Anticipation is an incredibly powerful tool. Think back for a moment to when you were a kid and you were waiting for Christmas. You already had written your letter to Santa. You already knew exactly what you wanted and you had requested and you were just waiting for it. And you waited and waited and waited. The anticipation a lot of times was often better than actually opening and receiving that gift. And I don't know about you guys, but there are some gifts that I got when I was a kid that I don't have anymore. But I still remember the anticipation of waiting for that. So what they suggest is to pay now and consume later. Plan a trip a year or two in advance so then you can really have that anticipation over time. And the last way that they can actually that they say that spending money actually increases levels of happiness is to invest in others. And that's the one that we're really going to focus on today. So pro-social spending, a lot of people are probably not familiar with the term pro-social spending. And basically what that means is just spending on someone other than ourselves. So those same authors partnered up with Lara Aiken, and she's from the Simon Fraser University in Canada. And they partnered up with her to do a study in 2014. And what they found through that study is that there's really only three ways that we can spend money. We can spend it on ourselves, we can spend it on someone we know, and we can spend it on someone we don't know. So pro-social spending is spending on someone other than ourselves. So that's what we're gonna focus on. And in their study, they found that there are mental and emotional benefits, and there are physical benefits as well from giving to others. Some of the emotional benefits are feelings of happiness and joy and excitement because you're doing something nice for someone else. There's also feelings of connection with the other person or connection with our community. We live in such a connected society, and I put that in quotes, connected society, because we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have LinkedIn, we have Twitter, we have all these social media things, but our society as a whole has become less social. Our society has a, a whole has become less connected. So by giving to others, we actually give ourselves feelings of connection, feelings of community. And we also give ourselves feelings of pride. So these are some of the mental and emotional benefits that we receive when we give to other people. There's also physical benefits. Now, some of these might seem a little crazy, but like I said, they did, they did a study with Harvard. And in 2014, they published the findings. And some of the findings, when I was doing research for my book, were pretty outstanding. So let's take a look at some of these. Lower stress. Now, Sabrina mentioned that at the beginning of this. And if you're a nonprofit professional, or if you're a professional in general, or if you're just, you're a parent, if you are just an adult living day-to-day -day life, you have stress. So who wouldn't like less stress? And one of the things with less stress is lower cortisol levels. And so what they found in their research is that when people give to others, not only do they have the emotional and mental rewards, but they also have physical rewards of lower stress levels, 
lower heart, heart rates, lower blood pressure, lower cortisol levels. And cortisol is our body's stress hormone that makes us eat those foods that we probably shouldn't eat, like candy corn or a McRib or pizza. <laughs> Some of the other things are increased dopamine levels. Dopamine is the body's happiness hormone. It makes us have feelings of happiness and joy. Increased oxytocin production. Oxytocin is our body's love hormone. And believe it or not, even physical strength. In their study that they had in 2014, they found that participants who donated to charity were able to squeeze a hand grip for a full 20 seconds longer than the participants that did not donate to a charity. So now we're including physical strength with some of the benefits from giving to others as well. There's so many more, and I could go into this, but that's a different conversation for a different day. <laughs> but some of them that I'll just touch on, fewer sleep disorders, better hearing, and even saliva production is increased when we give to other people. Our mouths literally water when we give to other people. I'm, my mouth's actually watering a little bit right now, just talking about giving. <laughs> All right. Now, at the beginning of this, I told you that your money doesn't matter, and I would prove to you that your money doesn't matter. And here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to use an analogy of a gallon of gas. And what we put our gallon of gas into is what matters more so than the actual gallon of gas itself. Now, I don't know where you live I don't know where you're watching from, but in Reno, where I'm from, gallon, one gallon of gas is pretty close to five bucks. So this is a perfect analogy. And it might be more than five bucks where you live. It might be less than five bucks where you live. But for this analogy, let's just say you have one gallon of gas. Now, if I take that one gallon of gas and I put it into a big lifted truck, I might help one person get five to six miles down the road. Now, if I take that same gallon of gas and I put it into a scooter, I might help that person get 50 to 60 miles down the road, quite a bit further. I've helped one person get a bit further. But if I take that same gallon of gas and I put it into a lawnmower, how many neighbors' lawns can I mow in my neighborhood? Now I've created, with that same gallon of gas, now I've created an entire neighborhood of positive impact. I've given back to an entire neighborhood rather than just to one person. So when I was doing research for my book, I did several presentations. I did presentations with fifth graders and sixth graders. I did presentations with kids that were younger than that. I did presentations with adults and businesses and everything in between. And I would always use this analogy. And when I present this analogy, I give different examples. So I say, if I have $5 and I wanna act like the big lifted truck, or I use that analogy for the big lifted truck, and I pay for someone's coffee at the drive through behind me, I, I've given one person $5 to pay for their coffee. Now, maybe if they got a big pumpkin spice latte or something like that, that $5 might not cover it, but if we're pretty close. So if I have $5 for the person behind me in a coffee drive through that's like the big lifted truck. I've helped one person in a, in a small way. If I take that same $5 and I donate it to the Nevada Humane Society, and I did some research on this, it is enough to provide food for almost one month for a hamster. So my $5 now goes a little bit further. In the first example, it provided one cup of coffee. In the second example, it provided food for almost one month for a little, little hamster. <laughs> Happy hamster, that's difficult to say. Try saying that five times fast. <laughs> but let's say that I want to expand it even further, thinking of the lawnmower analogy. At the Food Bank of Northern Nevada, because of the gen generous donations that they have from their food partners, one meal is only about 33 cents. And so my $5 donation now becomes 15 meals for five days worth of food for someone. So again, my money isn't what matters. What I put it into is what matters. The gallon of gas doesn't matter. What I put it into is what matters. So using this example and using this analogy, when I go in and do presentations, whether it's students, whether it's adults, whether it's public benefit corporations or anything in between, I use these analogies and examples to help encourage people to really expand the power of their giving. And another one that I use that I experienced myself is if I wanted to provide an article of clothing for someone who is homeless. 
let's say I go to a store like Walmart or Target. If I have $5 to spend and I go to that store, I might get one, maybe two undershirts for that person. But in Reno, we actually have a store where I can go in and purchase secondhand clothes for the by the pound. So I can actually go in and buy five pounds of clothes for that same $5. And when I did that, I was able to purchase two long sleeve shirts, two t-shirts, two pairs of sweatpants and a hoodie for $5. So again, this is really trying to get people to understand that I might only have a little bit of money, but I can really expand my giving if I think about this analogy of the gallon of gas and putting it into what's most important and what's going to get me the biggest result. So I mentioned some feel good examples that will help you feel good. And so the original class of fifth graders is where I'm going to start. So I went and did a presentation at a school locally here in town, and I used the analogy of the gallon of gas when I was presenting, and I used the examples of paying for someone's coffee, donating to the Humane Society, and donating to the food bank, just to kind of get their brains going, the wheels turning in there. And these fifth graders were great, and the, what they did with their money was incredible. And so I came up with a program with their teachers. So we had a before and after assignment. So the before assignment was that if I gave you $5 and one rule was you could not save it, you had to spend it, doesn't matter how you spend it. I want you to write down how you think you're going to spend it, how big of an impact you feel it's going to make and how you think it's going to make you feel. And then we came back 30 days later and did a follow-up presentation Ask them the exact same questions. How did you actually spend it? How big of an impact did it actually make? And how did it actually make you feel? And so these are some of the examples from that original class. So each of the 31 fifth graders received a $5 bill so they could go out and make a difference in their communities right then. If I were to just give them the idea and talk about the analogy of the gallon of gas, that's like giving them a blueprint. But if I didn't give them the five dollars, that's I'm not giving them anything. I'm not giving them the tools to actually go out and do anything. And if I give you a blueprint and ask you to build me a house, but I don't give you any tools, you're probably not going to get very far in building me a house. And on the flip side, if I just give you the tools and say, hey, go build me a house, you're probably not going to get very far with that either. So we need the blueprint. We need the tools. And then we need the action in order for us to actually get the results, to build the house, or to actually make a difference. So the presentation and the analogies of the gallon of gas and the examples are the blueprint, the $5 bills are the tools, and then the action is taken by each of the participants. So one student gave it to her mom for gas money. She used the gallon of gas analogy and she figured, I'm going to give it to my mom. She's working two jobs. She, I know she struggles to pay her bills. And so she gave it to her mom for gas money. And she said that it made her feel so good to be able to give back to her mom because her mom does so much for her. One student gave it to their dad to help with karma boxes. If you're not familiar with the karma box, the karma box is similar to a little mailbox. And there's a few of them around town in Reno. You might have them in your town. And what it is, is it's a, just a box where people will put donations, whether it's toiletries, whether it's bottles of water, whether it's canned food whether it's you know disposable wipes or whatever it is, things for people in need to come and take as they need. So one student gave it to their dad to help with karma boxes in town. One student found 50 travel shampoo and conditioners at a garage sale and ended up sweet talking the person that was putting on the garage sale into buying all 50 shampoos and conditioners for just $5. And then they donated them to the homeless in our community. So again, these kids are thinking about, can I take my $5 and just do one thing? Can I take my $5 and do something a little bit bigger? Can I take my $5 and do something even bigger? And the most powerful example from this original class is that 10 students on their own decided to pool their money together and go to the cafeteria and pay off the back lunch debt for other students at the school. And that was such a powerful moment and a, such a powerful example that the lunch staff was moved to tears. And they went and talked to the teacher and they said, where did the students get this money? Why are they doing this? The, two, the teacher had no idea that the students had done this. And so the teacher was so moved by it that she talked to other teachers at the school. And then they together pooled their money and paid off even more 
back lunch debt for students at the school. Such a powerful example of how giving is good for you. And in each one of these examples, all the kids that were part of this experiment said they felt happy, they felt excited, they felt proud, they felt like they were making a difference in their communities. They felt like they were connecting with the community. They felt like they were connecting with other students at their school. They felt like they were connecting with their family members and their friends. They felt like they were connecting with strangers and homeless in the community. The powerful connections that they were making are some of the benefits that we talked about earlier. And one example that happened so recently, I mentioned that, that Sabrina mentioned, and I mentioned that I wrote a book, it's called The $5 Difference, and I'll share a little bit more about that in a moment. But right before that book went to print, we had such a powerful example from another presentation that I had done that I had to stop the printing just to include this example in the book. So I was doing another presentation at a different school, and this was a class of sixth graders. And I used the same analogy. I used the same examples with a gallon of gas, with the Humane Society, with the Food Bank of Northern Nevada, with paying for someone's coffee behind you. I used those same examples and same analogies. And this one student thought outside the box and actually across the lines of paper. And I'll show you here in just a moment. Let me grab this real quick because you guys got to see this. So when we do these presentations, we hand out pieces of paper that have lines on them. It's just lined paper. And on the front, the students write down their before assignments. And on the back, the students write down their after assignments, the, how they actually spent the money and how it actually made them feel. And this young man clearly was thinking outside the box and he was thinking across the lines of paper. And you can see, I hope you can see, the lines on the paper run left to right, but he actually turned his paper and wrote across the lines. So clearly this young man is thinking outside the box when it comes to just thinking in general. So he wanted to see how big of a difference he could make. He took his $5 and he went and bought a powdered lemonade mix that was enough to make five gallons of lemonade. And then he talked his parents into going up and setting up a tailgate, setting up at a tailgate, a table where he could sell his lemonade, five gallons of it. And his parents kind of discouraged him at first because they said, it's winter time. There's not going to be a lot of need for lemonade. And he's, he really wanted to do it. So they said, OK, they set up a table at the Nevada Wolfpack tailgate. And he ended up selling all five gallons of his lemonade, all five gallons. And he raised a substantial amount of money that day. And he wanted to make the biggest impact possible. And he thought back to the example of the gallon of gas. And he remembered the actual examples of the food bank, the Humane Society, or paying for food for someone else. And what he decided to do is not split up his money, but to put it where he could make the biggest impact possible. So that day, that young man raised $166. And at 33 cents per meal, that's a little over 500 meals. So he turned his $5 into over 500 meals. And now you can see that was such a powerful example. We had to stop the, pre stop the printing to add that story to the book. And when he talked about, I had him come up in front of the class when he was, when we we're doing the after presentation, I had him come up in front of the class and tell the entire class how he felt. He said he felt so humbled and excited to be able to do something so powerful for the community. He was humbled that everyone was willing to give and give and give to the point where he raised $166 off of this $5. And he said in his wildest dreams, he never thought that he was going to raise that much money. He thought he was only going to sell 10 or 15 cups of lemonade because it was so cold outside. But Everybody kept giving and kept giving and kept giving. And then in turn, he was giving. So these are some examples that help you feel good. And these are some ideas to help you get giving. There are so many mental and emotional and even physical benefits that we receive when we give to others, that this is just something that I hope that everybody can get behind and everybody can share. And 100% of dentists agree that you should do it too. You should give because it is good for you. We talked about the health benefits. Physical strength is increased. Your saliva production is increased. I know that's weird, but your mouth's water. And we have lower stress levels. We have lower cortisol levels. We have higher oxytocin and dopamine levels. 
We're rewarded in this. And these are things that happen to us naturally when we give to other people. This isn't something that we can control, just like you can't control your heart pumping or not. You can't control your blood flowing or not. We were born this way. When we give to others, this is the reward that we receive. And it doesn't matter. And they proved in their study that it doesn't matter how much you give. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how you are giving. It doesn't matter where you live. When you give to others, you are rewarded mentally, emotionally, and physically. We talked about the emotional benefits of feelings of happiness and joy, feelings of connection to our community in a disconnected society, feelings of pride and satisfaction for you've done something good. And one of the things that we didn't talk about yet that is so incredibly powerful as well is the mindset of abundance. Now, I don't care if you're living paycheck to paycheck. If you're a nonprofit professional and your nonprofit is just starting out and you're struggling to raise funds and things like that, if you can give to others and it doesn't matter how much you give, you are telling it yourself and you are creating a mindset that you have more than enough. Because you're giving to others, not only are you rewarded mentally, emotionally, and physically, but now we're going to be rewarded because we are putting ourselves in a state of abundance, in a mindset of abundance that we have more than we need. And that is something that occurs naturally within us. So we were born to give. And I want to leave you with a quote. We make a living by what we get and we make a life by what we give. Now, a lot of people will attribute that quote to Winston Churchill. And I learned this from writing the book when I had my editor go through it and double check everything. It wasn't actually Winston Churchill that, origin that originally said the quote. He did use it several times. But I learned something that day. Regardless, the quote is powerful. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. The rewards that we receive are so incredible and they occur naturally when we give to others. Why wouldn't we want to do that? And I did mention the $5 difference. That's what the name of my book. And I have a surprise for each and every one of you that's tuned in right now. I didn't even tell my family about this because I didn't even know that this took place until today. So I just received my proof copy of the very first copy of the $5 difference, how to change the world with your spare change. Just received that in the mail, literally right before this presentation. So I, I couldn't tell if you guys <laughs> could tell if I was excited or not while, while I was talking, but I'm just overwhelmed at this. So if you'd like more information on that, it is called the $5 difference, how to change the the world with your spare change, these examples and the science behind it and how giving is good for you are part of this book. And there's more information on my website. If you guys have any questions or anything, feel, please feel free to reach out to me on the website. If we give to others, we are rewarded mentally, emotionally, and physically in natural ways that we, we can't even have, we don't even have control over. So I would encourage each and every one of you to give when you can, how you can, as much as you can, and you will reap the benefits mentally, emotionally, and physically. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, Jason. Thank you so much. I would ask that you um, repeat your website because the way it's laid out, part of the website was cut off. So um, I want to make sure that people get um, access to that um, because I think it's very, very helpful what you're sharing. We got a lot of uh, woohoos and that they like the karma, <laughs> karma box and, you know, they're saying congratulations and, and they're enjoying the presentation. And because one of the number one questions that I always get is, you know, about fundraising and people yep. have this fear of fundraising. And I am so grateful for you for, you know, the reason why I really resonated towards your topic, to be honest, is because one, there should be no fear. And especially if you build relationships with people and you know what they're passionate about, should be no fear in asking um, for their support because you're helping them. Just like you said, yeah. when exactly. people give, they feel great. You're increasing all of those great things that you talked about. So I want to know um, what um, if there's any questions, because I see the chat is just going and going and going. Um, but Jason is here to be able to ask any questions 
Um, they're saying that they love this. They're, they're so impressed by you. Um, they want to, uh, they, they cried a little bit. You got people crying out there. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and they agree with how giving affects so many good feelings, but is there a specific question that anybody has for Jason? Because he, um, he is an expert in this area, as he mentioned. Um, and so these will be a good time to get your questions asked around this philosophy. Um, and I will share this with you guys too. Um, there will be a little anxiety when you do go and ask, um, but this is one of the things that I told myself when I was doing fundraising asking, hey, I'm spreading joy. So you just have to remember you're spreading joy and that if you are doing cultivation right, you are aligning their values um, with what your organization does and you're spreading joy. And honestly, that is why I created my company and my Facebook group is because I love to spread joy. I am a, I, I am selfishly <laughs> using what Jason teaches uh, to, to, to make myself feel better. Um, so it's such a great calling that you have, Jason. Um, and I'm so Thank happy uh, that uh, God has placed us in each other's path. And um, I wish you nothing but success. Um, so um, I'm looking at the feedback. I think people are processing the, uh, Christy, is that your wife? Is Christy your wife? Uh, it's my stepmom. <laughs> your stepmom. Okay. I just noticed the last same last name. <laughs> She says, great yeah. job. I wanted you to know that. She said, uh, same last name. So she said, great job. So um, yeah. I just um, I just want to make sure, I think people are processing. It's a new approach. Well, it's not new, but I think people have a hard time grasping it. Why do you think that is? I think when we see people in society, you know, we, we hear about these philanthropists that give so much of their estate or they give so much to charity, we feel almost defeated. Like we, like it doesn't count. Like I only have $5. How big of a difference can I make? Right. And we hear about Warren Buffett donating 99% of his entire estate when he passes to charity. And he's encouraging other billionaires to do this too. But what we found is that you have to be a millionaire or a billionaire to make a difference. A lot of people are familiar with ALS, the Ice Bucket Challenge. That challenge raised over $100 million in a two-year period, and almost every single donation was $10 or less. Wow. So the money does add up incredibly quickly. Wow. Bernie Sanders, with his presidential campaign, raised over $3.5 million for his campaign. Almost every single contribution that he received was $20 or less. So we can make big impact with small differences. And that is the reason why I chose that title for the book, The $5 Difference, How to Change the World with Your Spare Change. Because a lot of us don't have a lot. Some of us are living paycheck to paycheck. Some of us are working for jobs. Some of us feel like we're not going to have a big impact because maybe we weren't taught these things and how, how to... You know, I didn't know that I could go buy clothes by the pound, secondhand clothes by the pound and go donate that instead. I didn't know that at the food bank in my community, one meal is 33 cents. And in larger communities, I found that a meal might be even less than 33 cents. There are communities in the, in the nation where they get even more support from corporate partners and donations from food manufacturers that a meal is only 20 cents. So now you donate a dollar, you provided five meals for someone. And we might not be aware of that. So I think there's lack of awareness. I also think that in society, headlines, big headlines lead. So when you when you get a, a thing that says Jeff Bezos donates $500 million to whatever Amazon rainforest project, whatever it is, right? We have these big examples. And so we feel like almost defeated in a sense where our money is not going to make a difference. I'm not going to be able to make a difference in my community. But think about this. If we have a thousand people that each donated $5, that's $5,000. That's an incredible expanse. And if we use these, if we, if we think about the examples that some of these kids did, these are, I mean, fifth and sixth grade kids that took their $5 and expanded it 
to over 500 meals. I mean, that we can do this. We can change the world with our spare change. And I think it's just, maybe we just don't realize that. We don't have to be a millionaire or a billionaire in order to make a difference in our communities. We have to be a thousand there. <laughs> it's been, you know, they proved in their study that it doesn't matter how much you give and it doesn't matter where you give. It's if you're giving, you're rewarded in these ways. So you can have rewards just from a dollar. You can have rewards from, I don't know, probably even a quarter. They didn't have that in their examples, but but I think it's just maybe a lack of uh, knowledge or not knowing about it. Or like I said, you feel like you see these other people making these giant contributions or these corporations that are making these giant contributions. And yeah, those are great, but it's like, here we are, we can make these donations and we can do these things and change our communities too. Yep. I, I totally, I totally agree with you. And Nancy said, if I wasn't retired from teaching, I'll do this with my class. I love that this message goes as a creative challenge to children, this building future giving citizenship citizens. So I, I love that message. And I want to also, I'm always going to take it back to a different, like a fundraising um, slant. I'm going to say, hear what Jason is saying. He's saying for like the food bank can be a family for 33 cents um, and so forth. So what that means for you on your fundraising end is know the cost of your service. So you can say to someone, donate $5 to my organization. And by donating $5 to my organization, this is how, this is the impact that you're making. So understanding what your unit, unit of cost is, is going to go a long way because you can then go out and share this message that, that Jason has put forth. So Jason, I'm going to, I'm going to say something and then we're going to jump off here. Guys, he didn't, right. he didn't authorize me to say this, but I'm sure he's, he, he, he likes giving. It makes him feel good. If y'all need a, a right. speaker for your board to kind of get motivated, <laughs> Jason might be your guy <laughs> because <laughs> it, it, it takes on a whole nother yeah. angle about feeling good. So Jason, thank you so very much for, for being here. Um, can you say your um, website out loud? And I will put it in the chat, but I do want you to say it out loud for me. Absolutely. It's the number five dollar difference dot com. So not five spelled out, just the number five dollar difference dot com. And Sabrina, it's interesting that you mentioned this because when I was researching, um, I mentioned the study from Harvard about pro-social spending and what they found. And it's about going back to what you said about letting them know what they are getting for their donation. People who donated to an example that they use in their study, people who donated to UNICEF versus people who donated for $10 for tent, I think was the name of the organization. And what that does was for every $10 that was donated, a mosquito net or mosquito tent was donated for every $10 that was that they received one net was donated uh, for malaria affected countries and the people who donated to unit the, the control group the people who donated to unicef didn't feel the feelings of satisfaction because they didn't have anything tangible to come back to how far did my money go how big of an impact did i make versus the people that donated to the ten dollars per tent organization and so those people, even though they donated the exact same amount, because this was a control group as part of the study, even though they donated the exact same amount to those organizations, the people who donated to the organization that knew exactly how far their money was going, they knew exactly how big of an impact they were making, felt greater satisfaction, greater levels of happiness, greater feelings of pride, satisfaction, greater feelings of, of connection to the community. And they felt that actual connection because like now I can, I know exactly how far my money is going. I know exactly what it's doing and where it went and how much it, it provided. And so the same thing is true. So if you are someone who is going out and you're running a nonprofit, maybe that's something that you can, can tie into and you can actually put a price on or not a price, but you can actually put some value behind what that person is actually getting for their donation or their investment if they're if they're a corporation that's investing for your nonprofit or a grant or something like that and you can actually give them some of that feedback 
perfect per awesome awesome and you know when you said the malaria project um i because I, my background is boys and girls club and i had i had a group um of 11 and 12 year olds and they're called the torch club and that was a, they did a fundraiser and they raised about 300 dollars, but it was specifically to buy the malaria um nets so and they go. were excited yeah. about it because they got it they knew exactly what they were fundraising for you are so on point my friend so thank you so very very much so that is our time and i'm going to leave you with this your mission matters and deserves to be highlighted in your community your mission matters and can be an inspiration to those who need it the most your mission matters and deserves to be funded to its fullest capacity we will see you later. Bye-bye and have a great day. Y'all be blessed.